Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel of Bio Professor. And today we are going to discuss few important tips and tricks by applying which our pedigree type of questions can get easily solved. Let's see what are those tips and tricks. So today we are going to discuss some important tricks based on which we can very easily solve any kind of pedigree questions itself. Whenever the student used to say me that, sir, this pedigree question is very getting very tough for me. I always used to say to all of my students that first of all, try to analyze the common type of that of the pedigree questions. And as per me, there are two major types of pedigree questions which are remaining present. The first one, it is, they will be asking you whether the trait in the given pedigree is a dominant one or a recessive one. And they may ask you that whether the pedigree is of autosomal one or a sex linked one itself. There can be one more kind of common questions which can arrive and that is to find out the genotype of that of the trait that has been given of a particular individual in that of the pedigree itself. That can be very easily calculated or decided when you are able to analyze whether the pedigree is of dominant or recessive one or autosomal or sex linked one, you can very easily analyze that the genotype of that particular individual having that particular trait itself. So we will come first of all to that of the question that whether the pedigree is of dominant or recessive one. In, in that sense, first of all, we'll try to decide that the, the pedigree is of recessive in nature or not. In order to know that the pedigree is of recessive in nature, we have to check that the trait about which the pedigree is telling us whether it is skipping any generations or not. If it is skipping any generations, certainly the pedigree will be recessive in nature itself. That means the affected individual will be having a normal parent. If this kind of scenario is persisting, that means the given pedigree is a recessive kind of, that of the pedigree itself. In the opposite sense, if the trait is present in each and every generation, in that case, the pedigree will be a dominant case in that case. So for the first type of question, dominant and recessive, you have to check what? You have to check the presence of that of the trait in each and every generation itself. Just go to that one. You'll be able to easily decide whether it's a dominant or recessive one. For the second question, whether the given trait or whether the given pedigree is of autosomal or sex link, I will always suggest that first of all, try to find out whether it's a sex link trait or not. And in order to find it out, I do have certain tricks itself that if it will be a sex link trait, you have to see that whether the affected number in among the affected number of the other individuals, whether the number of males are higher or number of females are higher. Okay, if the number of males are higher from even a single recessive allele also, you can think that it might be a sex linked kind of that of the uh, like pedigree itself. Moreover, if the trait is of X linked, okay, and if the father is affected, then automatically the father, he transmits his trait towards that of his daughter itself. This is a simple crisscross kind of that of the inheritance itself. That means the father will be transferring uh, his trait towards that of the daughter itself and the mother will be transferring his trait equally to that of the male as well as the female progeny itself. But the number of affected male will be higher as compared to that of the affected female itself. Okay. So, in order to know whether it's a X-linked dominant or not, a very important rule you have to follow, which is known as a DDD rule. This is also again based on that of the crisscross inheritance itself. The first capital D is telling you about that of the dominant trait. The second capital D is telling you about that of the dad. And third capital D tells you about that of the daughter itself. So dominant dad daughter rule. That means what? By seeing the progeny, by seeing the pedigree, you are able to understand that the pedigree is of dominant in nature. And you are seeing that the dad is transferring his trade towards that of the daughter itself. Obviously, it's a crisscross inheritance and hence it will be the x link and a dominant case as because the trait is present in each and every, we can say that, uh, generations itself. Now we have to know whether the trait is of autosomal or a sex link itself. 
in terms of autosomal you have to first you have to know that in terms of autosomal kind of that of the pedigree there will be no criss cross inheritance itself or non criss cross inheritance that means what the father he is transferring his trade directly towards his son a holandric kind of the case itself and in that holandric case what is happening the there is no like sex linkage or sex link kind of trait which is remaining present it will be directly an autosomal kind of that of the transfer itself okay so do do remember that the uh, there will be always a non criss cross kind of inheritance that will be remaining present in terms of that of the autosomal kind of that of the like pedigree itself moreover if you are seeing that the among the affected progenies equal number of male as well as equal number of female are getting affected you have to always like decide that that will be the autosomal kind of that of the pedigree which has been given previously only we had discussed that in case of a sex linkage what will happen the number of male parents will be male uh, individuals male affected individuals will be higher as compared to that of the um, uh, female affected individuals itself but in this case equal number of male as well as equal number of female they are getting affected over here do remember this point it is very important one in that case okay now if a, if a mother is affected and you are saying that all the child they are also affected in this case that stands for that of what that stands for that it is a cytoplasmic inheritance case itself that means what again it will be an autosomal kind of inheritance itself in that case so my dear students i think so by applying these few tricks it will be very easier for you to solve this pedigree kind of that of the question itself finally i would always say that don't ever think any kind of problem as a huge one try to analyze the solutions for the same itself try to think try to take out certain kind of alternative solution certain kind of easy tricks so that you can solve any kind of problems whatever it's coming to your life itself thank you very much for watching do subscribe my channel and stay tuned for more such conceptual and learnable videos itself thank you very much everybody